Hey everybody, uh, this is Jamie and we're working on part 6 now of our 2D JavaScript game programming tutorial series. So we're following along kind of with Code and More's uh, tutorial series. So last video we started our states um, and created our game state and that's what we're in right now. And in this tutorial I want to start moving around the character. So, uh, or the, the uh, Mario character at this point. So what I'm going to do now, and this is something that Code Moore does a little bit later in his series, but since we have the foresight to be able to see what he ends up doing, um, we'll add that in now, and that is the handler class. So what the handler class is going to do is that's going to take and be kind of a go-between for important variables and methods that we need that we might want to use um, from class to class. So we'll be throwing that handler in um, to a lot of our things, uh, our classes kind of similar to how we're doing with Delta Time and our graphics brush. So before we can move on to moving the character around, let's uh, let's at least just put in our handler class and then we'll do a key listener class as well. So we will create a new folder and this is going to be called uh, input. This will be, I believe it's input here. And in this folder, we will create a new JavaScript file called key manager. And then we will also, right in the root class folder, we will create a new JavaScript file called handler. And this will be our handler class, which will um, kind of, you know, move our, uh, our variables around in our game. So let's get started on this class first. So we'll define the module, passing in class here, and returning class or passing in class to our function, just like we do in most of them. And we will have a variable called game here. Now we will also have our, a few other variables, a world and such, but for now we're just going to have game. So now we will create the handler class itself. And we're creating the constructor. And we're going to pass in the game. And we will set game equal to the passed in game. And this way we'll be able to access uh, game methods and variables. So we've got game here. And now anything that we want to reference in our game state that we've got. So like if we come back here, we have a few things that are available for us um, or at least we can create a few things that are available for us <clears throat> one of those um, we can do is uh, in the games uh, class let me say oops, game dot prototype dot get width oops, set that equal to a function and we will return width. So if we come up here, we can see that at the top we have width, height, and all that. We can get the width just like this. Um, we also can do the same thing for height. And height here. So now we have access to get width, get height, um, and we can do the same kind of thing in our handler class now. So in the handler, we can come here and we can say handler dot prototype, oh, prototype, can't spell, dot get width, and set that equal to function. And we can just call oops, the game dot get with function. And we actually need to return this. So as you can see now, we just if we if we pass along the handler, we have access to things that are in the uh, 
the game class. No matter which class we're in, as long as we pass the handler, we'll have it. So we can do the same thing now with height. And height, and we'll call the get height function of the game. So now that we have this in here, there's an, uh, another thing that we can push through, which we will um, we will make when we when we build the class, and that's our key manager. We can pass along the key manager uh, through the handler. So let's go to our key manager class. Before we even start doing that, let's actually make the class, and I'll show you how this works. So like everything else, we'll define. And we will pass class in here and allow us to use class like so. So we have a private variable called keys. And this is going to be a blank array. All right. And so this array is going to contain all of our key codes. Um, but right now it's completely blank. So now we'll actually define the class key manager is equal to class dot extend and we will run the initialize or the constructor here and this will not take anything at all for, for now and <clears throat> now we can say key manager dot prototype oops prototype dot tick is equal to function and this we do not need to pass in delta time because um, we will not be multiplying by that to get any consistent behavior so we don't need to worry about that um, so one thing that we are going to do is define some some common keys and you can do this with whatever keys you want up down left right you could add the space bar and all those. You just need to know the key codes. So I'm going to be using WASD, and this is what we'll, how we set it up. So because we're in the key manager, oops, manager, um, we can refer to it as this. So we'll say this dot up. We're creating a new variable called up, our new property, and it's going to be equal to keys 87. So, so what we've got here is the array. We're looking at index 87, and we're going to set the value of this dot up to whatever value is in the index or in the position 87 of our keys array. And uh, you'll see how this works with the next function and why this uh, why this will work and why we do it this way. So this dot down is equal to keys 83. And this dot left is equal to 65. And this dot right is equal to keys 68. So where I'm getting these numbers, these are just the key codes um, that are assigned to the WASD for um, JavaScript. Now, I'm not sure if it's the same for um, a lot of other um, uh, programming languages if it refers to the key codes the same but if you just search JavaScript key codes uh, or something like that you'll be able to see all the key codes for each of the keys so you could do up down left right and at any point you can set it equal to a different key code so for like maybe the arrow keys if you wanted to do it that way so how this works now we will go window now we're going to refer to some actual JavaScript uh, DOM type stuff uh, or you know just some stuff from um, the browser so when we say on key up or on key down of the window this is an actual function that is already or a, a, um, a hook that already exists within um, the window so if we call the function on key down in pass in e that's the event handler um, we can refer to the key code of e and um, and since we're pressing it down we can set that value 
in the keys array. So what we can say in here is keys at the at the index of e dot key code. So all the key codes are a number, okay? So in this is a position in the array. So this position doesn't already exist. When we create this, it will it will set it, and we're going to set it equal to true. So what this is saying is the keys array will now, when we come down here, have a value set at the position or the index of, uh, let's say we press up, it will put it in uh, 87. So we will have a position of 87 and the value within that position will be true because the key is down. Alternatively, if we copy this and come here, we can say that uh, when the key is lifted, so when key uh, 87 in the case of the up key uh, or the W key, uh, 87 will be, then be set to false. So what this means is as we're playing the game and we press a key, so let's say we press the, uh, the W key, which is 87. So what we have here is a, an array and at position 87, it will be set to either true or false. Okay, and we, what we're doing is we're run, we're rendering, or we're sorry, we're uh, ticking this every second, or, or sorry, every tick, so that it's updating the uh, this property to whatever is in the array at the position that we want for that key. So 87 would be the position of whether the key W is up or down, whether it's a true or a false. So Whenever we press it down, it's going to change this to true, which in turn makes this dot up return the, the value true. So then we can say if this dot up, that means that if the key up or key W is pressed, then it's uh, then it will be set to true. So if it's true, then we can do some sort of action. So it's a very simple class. It's I mean. It, I hopefully you understand it. It's not doing too much. Just creating an array that will store all of the, um, all of the pressed and released keys, whether they are pressed currently or not. So the cool thing about this is this allows us to have keys that are pressed at the same time still show up as pressed. So what what normally would happen is you'd have a key down and you could only on key down. Uh, you know, you would only be able to kind of do things at one key at a time. This way you can actually have four or five or 20 keys pressed at the same time and you'll know that they're all pressed currently. And then vice versa, if the key is released, just that key or that position in the keys array will be set to zero or false and therefore we'll know that key is no longer being pressed. So the last thing we need to do in our key manager is return key manager. So now we have access to our key manager and we'll know if one of the uh, properties up, down, left, or right is true or false um, just by calling the tick function every tick. So now in our game state, or our, sorry, our game class, we can come up here and include key manager. Now, of course, we don't have that in the app.js file yet, but we will key manager with a capital M all right key manager all right so we've got that set now we need to go into our app.js and come to here and say key manager and it is in app slash classes slash input slash key manager with a capital M. Now that is the correct path. And if we come into our game in the constructor here, we will set key manager, which we will then throw up in our uh, private variables up here. Say var. Um, we've already got We'll just throw it up here. Key manager. So we will set that key manager equal to a new key manager. And 
Now that that's done, we can come to our tick and we can say key manager dot tick. So now what we're going to be doing is ticking that key manager in updating whether or not the uh, properties that we've created are set to true or false. So now that that is done, I'm going to create a another function in here called get key manager to follow along with our get width and get height that we created. So I will just copy these and we'll say get key manager. So now we have our key manager returning key manager. That means now in our handler we can add the new function called get key manager and that will return game.getKeyManager. So now if we have any functions that we uh, are any classes that we pass in the handler to we will be able to uh, will be able to access that uh, key manager. So if we go to our game state here um, we will need to add something to the constructor where we actually pass in the handler. So we'll pass in handler here and handler to our state there and handler in here. We'll set this this dot handler equal to handler. So now we can refer to the handler uh, in our state as this dot handler, um, which will allow us to get uh, key presses and things like that. So now that we've got the key manager, we've got our handler in there. Um, let me make sure in the app.js I include handler right here handler app slash classes slash handler so now we have our handler accessible uh, I want to start moving some stuff around let's see what we have to do now alright so we do need to I believe go here into the uh, constructor I believe of our game class and create a handler in the constructor actually we will throw this yeah let's throw this in uh, the initialize function so if we come to the initialize function and we will do this uh, right here we will say handler is equal to a new handler and we will pass in this which we've set up here to the instance so next thing we need to do is require handler and put it up here as handler so now we have reference to it so now we're creating a new handler and we're passing in this game class as or this game object as the game for uh, the handler class so if we come into the handler class it requires a game and that's how we're able to access all of the game uh, functions and, and uh, variables now we need to create a entity class um, to be able to move stuff. But you know what? Let's do that in another tutorial. Let's just get this moving in the game state. So if we come up to the tick, uh, we can say 
if and we will be able to reference uh, the handler so if this dot handler dot get key manager dot up so if the up is true so basically if the W key the way that we have it is set to up and it's set to true then we can um, we can move the character so what I'll do is say up here temporarily var x is equal to 0 and var y is equal to 0 now what I can do is in our tick we will just say x uh, and if it's up we would say y minus equals um, we'll say minus minus equals 20 times dt and what that'll do is it will move the character 20 pixels up every second and we'll do the same thing for x but we will do that on a different one so we'll this is how the general concept of moving the, the character will work so now we would say down and we would say plus and we can take both of these and do left and right moving the X oops moving the X left and the X right all right so now what we would do is set the var variable um, set the player or the uh, little Mario character instead of 2020 we will set him on the X and the Y variables so what this means is he will be set at 0 0 to start out and then as we move the key press the keys up down left and right those variables will change and we'll be able to hopefully move the character so I will save this now and we will see what we've got going on so first first things first we need to fix any errors errors that I inevitably have and handler is not a function because we did not return handler like I always do hopefully you guys just assume I'm going to mess up on that and you do it yourself and we'll see what else we've got going on and key manager uh, get key manager is undefined in the game state so let's see of undefined so basically what it's saying is this uh, this dot handler in our game state is not being set so does that that must mean that if we go to our game and we create the game state we have to pass in the handler so that's handler here I believe um, and we did not create the handler up here so up in the top we'll create a new private variable called handler and then we set it in the initialize function as a new handler passing in this game object and then when we create the k uh, the state we're gonna pass in the handler so that we can have access to um, all the handlers functionality so so here's our character and if I press the keys we don't have any movement so let's take a look and see what we've got going on here and why the movement isn't working so first things first we can go in the key manager and do some uh, some checking here so we'll say console dot log and we'll say uh, ticking so if we look in the console if we'll know that this isn't working or this is working based on whether it's saying ticking or not so we know that it's ticking the next thing that I will do is I will I will say keys 87 so what we'll do is now we'll log whether it's true or false or if it's even exists or not so it's undefined now 87 
So look, it, it's not being set to true. So this looks like it's just a problem in this code right here. So it on key down is equal to function is not doing something, but the key up is. So window dot on key down. We need to set it to key up right here. And that's why. So now if I remove my console.log, look at that. Something simple like that. All right, so now the key should be set. And there we are. Now our little guy is moving based on our code. So he's moving really slow because we've said only move 20 pixels per second. So if we want him to move faster, we can go into our game state and we can say let's move 50 pixels per second. Now if you look here, obviously this is just some temporary code. We're not going to keep it here in the game state class. We're actually going to create an entity class in the next tutorial and, um, and we'll be able to do movements and stuff with uh, some classes that extend that. So now if I refresh this just for now, we've got him moving a lot faster. So we've got him moving around the screen. Now the only thing that we need to do is let's let's now create a class that's going to uh, that's going to essentially take care of all of our entities. Um, and then we'll we'll extend that for our for our player. We'll create a player class and all that. But for now this looks good. We've created a key manager. We've created the handler which is going to be huge. It's going to help us in the future a lot. Passing variables and methods along to our handler. Um, we'll be able to do tons and tons of things. Uh, so I will see you guys in the next video where we hopefully start creating our entities and, uh, and getting some uh, our player class going. So I'll see you there.